Hey, well, this week's blog is on the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. You know, here at Destiny Church, we have a prayer room. We do about 24 hours of prayer a week. And just pretty much even our services, we're heading toward this ground. Lord, we've been praying for over two years. Build a habitation in the St. Louis, Missouri, Illinois area. I do live in St. Louis. And and we've been like vibing out. Like we've been praying. Intercessors have been rising saying, fear of the Lord. And here is the scripture. In Psalm 112, it says, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How blessed is the man who fears the Lord. That is, he reveres the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. Now, fear is like, you know, the Old Testament King James word on fear. Most people don't want to hear about that or the terror of the Lord. But it actually means if you revere God, where are the people that live with reverential awe? The replacement of fear in modern English is reverential awe. Of who you are, God, and what you do. This is a time I keep getting the burning of the Lord. The burning of the Lord. The fire that's on the altar of heaven. See, I think the fear goes with the fire and the fire goes with the fear or the revering of the Lord. This is a time to begin to cry out to the Lord and say, God, we need your fire. But we also need a real dose of the fear of the Lord. Would you come to my church, Lord? Would you come to my city, God? Would you begin in the bi-state area of Missouri, Illinois, to begin to spread out your fear, the reverential awe of who you are, Lord, and what you do? Because that's when men will run to the altar. That's when businessmen will understand the real Joseph company of how to spend their dollars. The profits we did for the honor of the Lord. We're not just making money. Uh, My son-in-law owns Smoothie Kings and there's different people in our church that own different businesses, accounting firms. But God, we, we honoring you, God, in everything we do, we're asking you to release the fear of the Lord, the reverential awe of who you are and what you do. I I really believe not, not many people even understand who he is. Uh, we say we want to, we sing the little song, I, I am a friend of God, uh, check it. M- make sure that's really true. Because I think we live far away in the outer court from the glory of the Lord. When God said, I'm inviting you to come all the way in. Won't you come all the way in and understand my character? So who are you, God? Here's a good prayer for us this week. God, give us a revelation, a fresh oil download of who you are. And what you do, who are you, Lord? Um, I, I know this is coming up in my spirit from the prayer room that Exodus 1511, if you want to study something that'll blast you right into oblivion in a good way in the Holy Spirit, is he's majestic in his holiness. He's awesome in his praises and he's still working wonders. Think of these three things in the knowledge of the holy. He's majestic in his holiness. His his splendor is actually in his holiness. He's awesome in praises or the splendor that he has. It makes him so awesome. It's beyond his holiness or next door to his holiness. And he's still working wonders. See the knowledge of who you are, Lord, and what you do will change the American church. It'll change the devotional life of every American believer. Again, if you look at the three courts, just um, in a general way from the Old Testament, you've got well, I'm, I'm saying after 26 years of traveling on the road, I mean, check this in your, in your heart, that most American Sunday morning church services are Saturday night. 80% of all that activity is outer court. It has nothing to do with touching the Lord. This is, can't be right. We've got it inverted. It's social fellowship. It's time together. I love that. And that's good. But that shouldn't be the majority of what we're doing. Is there any place in a 30 or 40 minute worship service that we allow 8, 10 or 12 minutes? for the Lord to touch his people and we leave space for his people to touch him. You know, a number of years ago at our church, I mean, we have 12, 13 our people in our church, but about three or four years ago, we had to break the destiny worship model. We had it down so good. It, it was operating at so good, our rehearsals, that my wife had to elbow me in the side and go, during a Sunday morning church service at my home church, which it looks awful smooth, it's awful slick, it's like totally over rehearsed. We've taken the spirit out. Now we have the, the clammy hands of men's flesh all over because we, we have it down to a T. Well, we don't want it down to a T. Let's allow who God is and what he does to begin to intervene. Interrupt our services, God. Interrupt our time, God. Be, begin to break it. I call it divine interruption 
and divine interception. God, come and, and interrupt our, what we're doing, even our daily life. Um, a good friend of mine who's actually running the video camera right now came and asked me for prayer uh, just this past Sunday about devotional life. Wouldn't it be great? Let's just have the whole church come forward. And God, we're praying right now. Fresh oil and hunger. Fresh oil and we want to thirst after you again, God. And we come back to the fear of the Lord. The reverential awe. Well, there's a couple of things I want to read here. Re- revere is to fear or to feel the awesomeness of our maker. As, as the Jews pray, he's the king of the universe. He's the king of all majesty. David recorded in Psalm 121, uh, I looked into the sacred cities. I looked into, you know, those places that contain the presence of the Lord before. Now it's gone. But now I know my help comes from the Lord. He's the maker of heaven and earth. The maker of heaven and earth. God, if you would just give us a fresh oil revelation uh, to feel the awesomeness of the very God we serve to regard with deep respect to re- to have great love and devotion for to have such an awe we cannot live our rated lifestyles anymore I mean we, we don't intentionally try to do that but I'm telling you our, our society has changed so much it's really not good for us so what I want to do is close out this blog with a song on the fear of the Lord on the reverential all oh God of who you are. Fear of the Lord. Reverential all of who you are and what you do. Fear of the Lord. We need a revelation of who you are and what you do. Build your eyes. In my city, Lord, release your reverential wall and let us see. Rain down, rain down, rain down, fear of the Lord. It's going to be our prayer all week long. Oh, fear of the Lord, awake, oh sleeper, come out of your coffin, fear of the Lord, yeah. Reverential all and falling like a rain, God. Well, send it like the rain, Lord. Cause of all of who you are and what you do, and thousands will see, and thousands will know. But when you release your reverential all, they're coming by the hundreds, they're coming by the thousands, beyond our music and preaching. They're coming by the hundreds, they're coming by the thousands, beyond our music or worship and our preaching, God. Oh, fear of the Lord, reverential all of who you are and what you do. Fear of the Lord, reverential all. It's the knowledge of who you are and what you do. We pray for our churches. We pray for our cities. We pray for your glory. Fall again. We need your reign, Lord. We need your revelation. To break out of what we've been in and our sin. Oh, fear of the Lord, who reverential all. Oh, of who you are and oh, what you do. Oh, fear of the Lord, reverential all. Of who you are and oh, what you do. So God, we pray it right now that there be a revival of the fear of the Lord falling in every city, in every state in America, God. We're coming out into our high calling, Lord. We're coming out into the high places, God, to worship, to prophesy, and to intercede for your glory, God. Let there be a fresh oil revival, God, of who you are and what you do, Lord. Who you are and what you do, Almighty God. Who you are and what you do. Send your rain, 
Send your rain, send your rain, send your rain, send your rain, send your rain. Thank you, Holy God. Bless you in the name of Jesus.